Hi, my name is Oliver. In this video, I'll teach you how to animate a waving flag in After Effects. First of all, I have illustrated this flag in Illustrator. It's the Danish flag, it's from Denmark, that's also where I'm from. And I've simply separated it into the pole and the flag itself. Now, we're mostly going to work on the flag, as the pole will just be there to hold onto the flag. But to attach the flag to the pole, we actually have to start with the flag at the edge of the composition. So let's just drag it out so it's roughly at the edge. And then we're going to right click, pre-compose, and we'll just call this pre-comp flag. So let's go into this pre-comp. And we can zoom in a bit on the flag so it's easier to work with. Sort of like this. And now we're going to use a very basic effect that's used by most people and it's called wave warp. So if we go to the effects and presets tab, we can just search for wave warp, click and drag it over to our flag. Right now, this is pretty intense, but don't worry, we're going to fix it up. So it's a sine wave, which is fine, but we need to adjust the height and width itself. So we can just drag out the values. Now the height doesn't need to be that big of a number, but we actually have to adjust the width so as you can see, as we drag this out, it starts to look more and more like a flag. So maybe we are happy sort of around these values and this looks fine for now. Don't worry, we'll get back and adjust it later on. Right now, we actually have to look at something called pinning because if you play this animation, you can see that it isn't really attached to the edge, which we certainly want it to be. Now you can pin this by going to pinning and then selecting one of these options. The reason why I've taken the flag and dragged it all the way to the edge is so we can pin it to the left edge. If it was in the middle of the composition, we wouldn't be able to pin it to anything. So you can see it has changed a lot as it isn't waving at the start, but it slowly starts to wave more and more towards the other side. So we can try and play this back and you can see that it's now pinned. So this looks all right for now, but we are going to adjust some more settings. The wave speed is quite good as it is, I think, but we're going to look a bit at the direction. So right now it's pretty simple, quite boring as it's just waving at a 90 degree angle. But if we go to that 90 degree angle and perhaps change it up to something like 45, we get a bit more of an interesting result. Now this is a bit more organic, you could say, and that's really what we're looking for uh, when when animating a flag, because a flag isn't that simple, it doesn't wave at 90 degrees, wind comes from all directions, and it's sort of all over the place. So this looks quite nice, but we're actually going to take the wave warp effect, press command and control D to duplicate it, and we're going to adjust some of the settings. Now this just creates another copy, and this copy will make it a bit more organic, so watch and learn. If I, as an example, take the height, you can see maybe we have to decrease that a bit for this copy. Then I can take the wave width and perhaps we also need to decrease this so maybe around 70. And you can see that the animation overall becomes a bit more organic. And that's because when duplicating the wave warp effect, it applies it to itself. And when it's in two copies, it just creates a bit more of an interesting effect rather than just the standard wave warp. So as you can see right now, maybe we find this a bit extreme, but we can just go ahead and change some of the settings. So maybe up here, this should be a bit lower, so maybe 120, and also the height should probably also be lower. So as you can see right now, this actually looks quite nice, and I think I'm pretty happy with this. So let's go back into the main composition. Now the flag isn't aligned to the pole, but we can easily do that by just clicking, holding down shift, and dragging it over so it approximately lines up. The flag is underneath the pole, so it doesn't matter if it's a bit too far underneath because it really won't show anyways. So let's try and preview this. And you can see that the flag is waving nicely. But perhaps you want a bit more randomness, a bit more turbulence in the middle of the flag, because right now it's mostly the edges. You can also see it a bit in the middle. Maybe you also just want some shading, because right now it's pretty flat and you don't really get that sense of three-dimensionality and you really don't get a sense of depth. 
but there's also a way you can do this. This is by using an effect called Turbulent Noise. So if we go to Layer, New, Solid, we can just call this Turbulent Noise. And I just want to make it black. It doesn't really matter. That's sort of a habit. Go to the Effects and Presets tab and we search for the Turbulent Noise. So drag it over. And right now you can see that it's creating some noise, but at the moment it's pretty vague and we want to adjust that. So we'll, we'll adjust some of these settings. And first of all, we actually want to change it from the basic to the dynamic progressive. So this is a bit of a different pattern and we actually want to adjust the contrast. So you have to imagine that at all of the dark spots, that's going to be a shadow and at the light spots, that's just going to be the ordinary flag. Therefore, we also need to go to the transform because right now we can't really use this for the flag animation. So we want to adjust the scale, but we don't really want it to be uniform. We can uncheck this box and we can go ahead and adjust some of these settings. Now we want it to be taller than it is wide. We're sort of looking for something like this. And we can just keep adjusting until we get something we like. But again, this is pretty random. So we'll have to adjust these settings, try it on, on the flag, and then go ahead and sort of readjust some of the settings again, because you won't get it perfect the first time. That would be pretty lucky. At least I think so. So we have gotten this turbulent noise, but right now it's pretty still and we want it to be animated. So the first thing we'll do is actually animate the evolution. So as you can see, the evolution just sort of changes up the pattern and we can do this manually by adding some keyframes or we can actually add an expression that just changes this over time. So we go and all click on the stopwatch, then we type in time and then we have to type in how much it has to change every single second. So we actually need quite a high value for this as the low values will change it so little that you won't really notice it. So maybe this should be 250. We'll go ahead and try and preview this. And as you can see, this should work fine for now. So maybe we just want to adjust the contrast a bit so we get a bit more contrast. And now we actually also want this layer to move in X space. But if you do that by dragging the layer, as you can see, then it sort of shows the background and we don't really want that. The reason why we want it to move in X space is so the shadows move along with the flag. So it looks like it's actual shading on the flag itself. Now we can move it along by actually going to the offset turbulence. You can see that if we alter the X position here, it will move it along. Now for this one, it's actually easier to just add some keyframes instead of going ahead and doing expressions. So go to the start, add a keyframe for the offset turbulence. Then if we zoom out a bit, we can go to the end and we can just drag this along. So we, we have to take a look if this is fine for the speed. So this is good for now. We might want to change it later, but let's just go with this. Now we don't really want the shadows to have very sharp edges. And we're also going to use this effect to do some displacement on the flag itself. So we actually want to add some Gaussian blur. So just search for Gaussian blur, add it to the layer, and then we can go for perhaps 20 or maybe 30. So that looks fine. And now we're going to try and use this in our actual flag animation. Now, before using any sort of displacement effect, we want to pre-compose the turbulent noise. Otherwise it will just look at a black solid and that won't change anything. So right click, pre-compose, just call this the turbulent noise. And we have to move all attributes into the new composition. Otherwise these effects will stay in this composition. Click OK. And now we can hide this layer and we want to create some displacement on the flag. So go to the effects and presets. We can just search for displacement and we'll use the displacement map. Drag that onto the flag and now we want to zoom in. So right now it looks pretty weird, but that's because we haven't really chosen any settings yet. So if we choose the displacement map layer as the turbulent noise, you can see that it already changes. And then we have to look at the luminance. This means that it will displace every time it's showing something white. 
and it will not displace when it's showing black. So if we enable the luminance for both, and we just enable the turbulent noise again, we can see that in the white spots it will displace, in the black it won't. So go out, and you can see if we enable and disable, you can see that there are some minor adjustments in the middle compartment, and we can actually just turn this up if we want more, and if we try and play this back, you can see that it's pretty damn extreme. So we don't really want that much, but it's just to sort of show you the effect. So we'll just put it back to five and maybe the edges are a bit too rough. We can always fix that by going to the turbulent noise and just adding some more Gaussian blur. So go back into the flag composition, sort of the main composition, and we can try and play it back again. So as you can see, this looks quite organic and I actually quite like it as it is. And now we're going to try and add some shadows to see if they complement the flag. To create the shadows, we'll actually take the turbulent noise layer, we'll drag it underneath the pole so it's right above the flag, then we will duplicate the flag composition, and we will just toggle the switches slash modes, then we'll go and we will select the track mat. Now the track mat initially decides whether something is shown or not, and you can either select the alpha or the luma. So we are going to select the luma. This means that it will decide whether it's shown or not based on the light or dark values. So that would be white is 100% shown and black is 0% visible. So if we select the luma mat, right now you won't really be able to see anything, but that's because the two flag layers are identical, which means that if we disable this one, you can actually see that it's not showing some of the values, which is what we want. Now we can enable this again, and we just need to add some curves to this flag layer. So go into the effects and presets, search for curves, and drag it onto the flag. Now in the curves, you can either adjust the highlights, shadows, we just want to darken it. So take the top point here, drag it all the way down, and you can see that it gets darkened. Right now it's pretty extreme, but we'll just go to the flag layer, Press T as in opacity, maybe go 30, 45%. That should do the job. And we can try and preview this. So as you can see, we have implemented the shadows and it really looks like the flag is actually having some sort of depth. Now maybe we want to go to the turbulent noise. Just click on the layer and press U two times. And that shows all of the keyframes and also the expressions that we have used. Maybe we want this time expression to change a bit faster. Maybe not double, but we can go for 400. Go back into the main composition and just try and preview. Now this looks quite nice. It sort of changes the shadows, the shape a bit faster. And you have to remember that this is a very organic animation, which also means that you might be getting completely different results, which is all fine. And maybe you're getting something better, something worse just have to alter the settings and there's really a million different combinations and ways of doing this. But this is just my take and my way of doing it. And I hope that you have some key takeaways from this that you can use in your work. It's really all for this tutorial as for now. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, post a comment and tell me what you might be able to use in future projects. If you create something from this tutorial, be sure to share it with me on Instagram at Oliver Randolph. There's a link in the description. And make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications if you want to get notified when I upload future videos. That's all for now. Till next time.